Hello everyone. I hope uh, you can hear me well and see me. I mean, you watching. Uh, I don't know if the sound is okay, if the quality of the picture is okay. Just let me know, please. Okay, I'll I'll, I'll check on the chat. And uh, where's uh, Flea? Hi, hello. Uh, let me know if you hear. So, Brandon, Brandon, hello. So uh, let me know if uh, you can hear me well, please. Okay, wonderful. Thank you very much. So uh, so let me uh, let me carve for a little bit. I'll wait uh, for a few more people, and uh, I'll tell you some updates, uh, what I'm working on and uh, what is going on, and uh, I'm gonna try to answer the biggest question, <laughs> where I've been. Uh, a lot of people emailed me and actually asked me why I'm not doing. Um, live streams more often okay obviously there's a reason or i should say multiple reasons but uh, what you see uh, this piece uh, that piece is actually uh, the piece we worked on uh, the last time i was teaching in person in uh, mark adams school of woodworking and time-honored crafts. Uh, we worked on a French style wood carving. It's a traditional uh, French style of uh, 19th century and we did not finish it and I brought home whatever I need to finish uh, and I'm still, uh, it, it looks somewhat rough but anyway so that piece is actually uh, really nice. I kind of uh, like uh, the idea of this piece uh, it is uh, uh, Rococo style. It does have some acanthus movements. It uh, has some uh, shells or whatever the Rocali they call it. Some ribbon, I mean couple of ribbons actually. A uh, couple of movements, uh, the flower. And it covers pretty much all of the aspects of, of wood carving. Okay, Bernie, good to see you. I'm uh, Bernie, glad to see you. I didn't see you for a long time, but thank you very much for connecting. Uh, so let me see if there's uh, some uh, questions. Yeah, long time no see, that's true. <laughs> okay, hold on just a second. Let me just connect my chat for I can see everything. Uh, let, let me know please uh, uh, if uh, if you connected on a Facebook, uh, let me know if you can see me on a Facebook, if the sound is good. Uh, I, I can see that uh, uh, YouTube is okay. Uh, also there is a Twitch I connected and uh, we can continue after that. Okay, but anyway, so like I said, a uh, little update. Now this piece, uh, this piece, uh, that was a class in person. Uh, I was teaching in uh, Mark Adams School of Woodworking and uh, that piece, like I mentioned, it is a French style. We worked on that for five days and by the end of five days that is what we've got. It is not 100% done and it's almost never. Uh, it's impossible you know, to get it done in five days. But let me actually show that little closer to you uh, for you to just see, okay? Uh, again, uh, the goal when I'm teaching in person, it's not to get it done 100%, but uh, to cover the, all of the aspects of wood carving. And in this case, uh, we covered a lot, okay? So again, that was a classical or traditional wood carving. And uh, for five days project that's good okay now i also have to tell you that uh, uh, we had to cancel one of the classes in state of maine uh, the cancel because uh, uh, you know the school is actually shut there's no more school actually in maine and that's a really sad news and we have to give money back to the people. Uh, but uh, those of you who's watching and who actually already tried to get on a class in Maine, uh, I'm gonna teach in Mark Adams again in July to, uh, 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 
2023 in July 10th and that's going to be uh, Green Gibbons class it's going to be a more complex class uh, one of the classes I was teaching in Maine uh, that was this piece right here okay so that was uh, also five day class in Maine oops I just broke the thing oh just broke the thing <laughs> in a live stream but it's okay but that is the piece uh, we worked on in Maine and that was a Glenn Gibbons class and we're gonna have Glenn Gibbons class in uh, Mark Adams school I'm talking about Glenn Gibbons style okay uh, don't worry about that I broke the thing uh, I already broke that before it, it just uh, fell okay so uh, I did not put that in the right uh, place and I just kind of you know it happens sometimes sadly okay but anyway so that was just a class and uh, uh, I'm gonna do uh, not exactly the same like uh, uh, this piece it's gonna be different because we never repeat uh, the same class uh, you know it's every project is different but uh, July 10 uh, or 10 uh, our tents are going to be in Mark Adams School, which is in Indianapolis, state of Indiana. Okay, uh, if you want to uh, sign up, you can go directly to Mark Adams' site, markadams.com, I believe, or you can go to my site, uh, schoolofwoodcarving.com, and just uh, check the, the menu, uh, events, I believe it's what it is or something like that in person it could say just in person and just uh, uh, follow all the links okay so now that is uh, uh, in person uh, let me see if uh, if there's uh, any comments all right hold on just a second uh, let me show you what we've done actually in uh, online online class that is the latest project for the online class um, this one okay so that is the latest project for the online class it is uh, somewhat beginners I would say yeah, just show that little closer to you so that is uh, like a beginners class I shouldn't say it's really beginners because not really it's just uh, a little easier to do for the beginner uh, if you want to get uh, in wood carving but uh, those butterflies are available actually online in the school and uh, the technique we used it was just uh, pretty much one knife okay well not really it was knife and uh, gouge okay but 90% uh, or 99% uh, what we've done right here it was a knife okay let me know what you think about this if you like that or not and uh, uh, that is a butterfly based and if you can see a little bit you know the shadows those two butterflies are raised up slightly above the surface uh, you can do it a full plate I did not do it as a full plate I'm talking about uh, you can just uh, do the real uh, carving on the back side I didn't I decided not to okay uh, but I cover the techniques uh, how to use just pretty much a knife and that technique uh, is uh, the oldest okay that technique is the oldest I would say uh, if you just go to north uh, in Europe European countries like Norway Sweden North Russia North Germany uh, you will find uh, wood carvings from 9th century 8th century 10th century and uh, that is all done in that technique okay all done pretty much uh, with the knife again uh, please understand I mean back then people didn't have a lot of tools and even those Vikings uh, you know <laughs> obviously especially if you are on a boat and all you have is pretty much just a knife uh, and you still want to carve something so you're still able to do something beautiful with just one knife and talking about nowadays uh, about the same I would say uh, you know uh, 
you know, not everybody has a big budget for buying all the tools, and tools nowadays are somewhat expensive. I mean, they are expensive, really expensive. And I wouldn't recommend you to buy cheap uh, tools. I mean, you could. I mean, if you want to just get uh, uh, in wood carving, uh, you can buy some cheaper tools. But if you really want to be successful, I would just uh, go with the good brands like File, Ashley Isles, Henry Taylor, uh, you know, really good brands, which is going to last you a lifetime. But every tool is uh, expensive. We're talking about uh, 45, 50 bucks per tool. But uh, one knife will get you, you know, something beautiful also. Okay. Uh, now, uh, uh, also, last time I did the li live stream, uh, some questions actually, uh, uh, some people emailed me questions about that uh, tool chest, what I have. And, uh, you know, obviously all <laughs> tools are in the drawers. I have a lot of tools and they all organized right there. And I always know, you know, where the tool is placed and I can grab and carve it. And the question was, where did I buy it? Uh, I bought it on just Amazon, okay? I, I, I'm not really, uh, you know, I, I didn't try to find a specific brand. Uh, what I needed to just to make sure it's a narrow, I don't need a wide, like a normal size. The normal size would be 24 inches, like a two feet, uh, but this one is only a 16 inches deep which is actually really good for my tools even for the longest ones but the size is just perfect okay it's a narrow drawers and uh, i can fit the longer tools and shorter ones and they have a lot of space this one is uh, about eight feet it's a it's a uh, it's a big one okay and if you're interested i can actually place a link uh, it's not cheap uh, when i bought it uh, it was cheaper but now it's more expensive but this one is made not for the tools, but for the professional kitchen, for the utensils. Uh, when you buy uh, the same thing for the tools, uh, the uh, the drawers gonna be much deeper. But this one it has only about a couple inches. It's what I need. It's only two inches tall. Okay, so that is what I have. Okay, so uh, if you're interested, just. Uh, uh, I'm gonna place the link underneath. All right. So let me check. Let me check if uh, there's any questions. Uh, I don't know if anybody connected on uh, Facebook, by the way. If you are on the Facebook, just let me know. Uh, uh, I didn't connect for a long time, and I don't wanna. You know, talk to people if they're not connected, <laughs> right? So, but let me let me carve a little bit, and uh, if it's all right, you can just uh, watch it. But like I said, uh, that uh, tool chest is a really good tool chest for me. It works fine. It's not the only one. I've got. Uh, on this side, I've got another tool chest I've got right there, another tool chest I've got right there. <laughs> After this one, even more extension, uh, there's uh, another one. But uh, like I said, the, the, um, the main idea is just to get that narrow, okay? Work on that little bit. I also thought uh, to make some live streams when I don't say anything, just the carve. I think it's going to be helpful also. 
just carving. I am planning to do a really good project right now. And maybe some parts of it I can just carve life. If you know a little bit about the logic of uh, design, I, I try to follow. I try to see conflict in everything. Not really conflict, but uh, the idea of oppositions in everything. Uh, when I look at the nature, uh, I can always find everything is just opposing to everything. So there's a black, there's a white, there's a light, there's a darkness, and there's a plus and minus in electricity and so on. And always in um, those oppositions, uh, you can see one is a dominant and a second one is a lesser, okay? So, which is uh, comes to the idea of golden ratio, uh, which is a 62% of a space. Let's say, if I'm working right now on this design, 62% of a space would be, uh, <laughs> let's say, even like uh, this element. Okay, so this one is a acanthus leaf, and uh, I repeat the acanthus leaf right here. Okay, but if you just uh, take this piece and take this piece and uh, you can see obviously the golden ratio so that would be 62 percent or 61.9 that would be 38 percent or 60 40. if you would just to take that point that point and extend right there so that would be like uh, 100 units and it's going to be 60 40. so those guys in opposition to each other uh, if you take uh, this element uh, which is a ribbon take the distance right here and take this ribbon right here so you can see again it's a 60 and 40 so it's again the same idea same elements uh, same opposition like a golden ratio uh, also if you take this part of a shell and if you take that part of a shell or rocali so you can see this one is a 60 this one is a 40 and uh, everything is just the fights everything it's just uh, uh, more harmony so let me see if there's uh, some questions okay Fabio Fabio Vanini uh, what kind of glue do you recommend to make grafts in case of losing parts of a carving piece what about the uh, hide glue Hide glue is actually good. I kind of like it. Uh, I mean, it's a historical glue. Uh, of all of the furniture, antique furniture back then, they used hide glue. 
obviously because they didn't have a <laughs> tie bond. But the hide glue is, is really good. Uh, it takes stain really well. You can hide the, you know, the seam. But uh, there is a problem. The hide glue, hide glue lifespan is only about 70 years. That is why some antique furniture just falling apart. Okay. So nowadays, uh, there's a lot better glues. Oh, by the way, you are a luthier, so you're doing some uh, the instruments. Uh, I believe for the luthiers, it's a better solution, not just the height glue, but the uh, uh, fish, uh, based on the bones of the fish glue. It's also the same idea, but it's uh, uh, made from fish. It's so much stronger, I believe, okay? So. So, Celso Rosso, uh, are you going to add this project uh, online class? No, I'm not, unfortunately. Uh, I did not film that project. Uh, not every school I do filming. Uh, it's just the policy of the schools. And in Mark Adams school, uh, I usually don't film. Okay, so I can't add that. Uh, the only school I was actually filming it was uh, like you know this project right there it was uh, in Maine I showed you previously this one so that was filmed before and uh, obviously you probably saw that online since you are a member of my school so that one is uh, available okay. <laughs> which I broke <laughs> And I'm going to break it again, I guess. <laughs> oh, what's up with me today? So, something wrong with me today, but anyway. So, anyway, so that... <laughs> and don't laugh. So, uh, but this one is available online. At least, you know, uh, you can see the pictures before I broke it, before I dropped the thing. But I have to be more careful with that thing. Uh, another question. You are using reverse backband gouge as your main tool today. That's surprising. No, uh, no, not really. It was just uh, in my hands. Let me just change that tool. I kind of like it, okay? I kind of like uh, backband because you can use it, you know, as a main tool if you <laughs> just exactly the same like you just said. I can do that. But no. You can see that is just a straight gouge, which is uh, Ashley Isles. Fabio, could you offer some kind of uh, mentoring online? Uh, Fabio, I don't know uh, what you mean. Uh, if I, do you mean if I can do one on one, like over Zoom per se or Skype, something like that? Do do I understand you correctly? Uh, if we can just schedule the time and just go over the things like in person pretty much. Uh, let me know if, uh, if uh, that is exactly what you mean. So for some personal projects. So as I understand you, uh, you are working on a project and you would like to just uh, talk to me over the Zoom and just go over it, okay? Not necessarily connected to the project I am doing online in my school, but connected to your project. Am I correct? I hope I am correct. And I'll wait until you answer. But uh, I guess I understood you uh, properly. Uh, I thought about it, okay? Uh, I thought about uh, uh, just to do in like a one-on-one -on -one scheduled time and so on. But again, the, the problem is time, okay? 
the time is pro uh, the problem because I'm still working on a you know on a real projects, but especially when you do in a, in person, it, it would take you know some involvement, right? So that's uh, maybe in future I probably should do. But you're doing really well. Uh, I saw some of your project uh, projects, Fabio. You are amazing, uh, you know, wood carver. And of course, Luthier also making musical instruments. And uh, I saw some of your posts on Instagram, and you're already uh, <laughs> uh, combining all the golden ratio and Fibonacci sequence, which is I'm big. Fabio, my problem is more in uh, respect designing appropriate for wood. Okay. Sergio, sorry I have to leave. Yeah, I mean, good to see you, by the way. Okay. Uh, Fabio, not so much for execution. Uh, I know you are a really good carver, but uh, design, yes. I uh, you can always uh, you can always uh, email me because you're a member of my school. Uh, uh, if you can email me uh, some sketches, I'll make some marks and I'll email you back. Uh, that is what uh, other uh, luthiers. Uh, there is a friend of mine in uh, Texas, he sends me sometimes uh, his sketches and uh, I look at them and uh, if I find if it's good, it's good. If it's not, then I can just uh, correct that, you know, just to give uh, some critique. I'm not uh, always uh, respond right away because uh, it, you know, uh, you know, limitation of time, okay? Uh, Fabio, you don't have to be sorry for your English. Your English is excellent. Okay. So, but like I said, just please email me and uh, I'll check what you're doing and so on. But uh, like I mentioned before, this project is also everything, every little detail of this project. Uh, it's uh, based on the golden ratio, uh, based on uh, Fibonacci sequence and everything. Even like I said, uh, there's a two pieces of uh, acanthesis. Uh, there's a two volutes you can see. Take a look this volute and take a look this volute. This one is a bigger, that one is a smaller. This one is a 60%, this one is a 40%, or 62% I should say, versus 38% golden ratio. There's uh, another part. There's a uh, a part right here and there's a part right there okay so if you look at the beginning of this part and that part again this is a 60 that one is a 40 okay so everything is just connected right there uh, now uh, also a position of direction uh, let's say this ribbon uh, you can see it's facing this direction and uh, this smaller ribbon tries to fight that and just goes opposite direction okay so uh, even in the movements, uh, you can just uh, do an opposition. Uh, well, not not always. Let's say uh, the, that acanthus and this acanthus, it's pretty much uh, going to the same direction. It's, this one is just uh, uh, less meaningful, I would say. The golden spot would be obviously this spot right here. Okay? Uh, so there's going to be, uh, I mean, this is going to be the main golden spot. Uh, again, if you take a space from here, from this end to the center, and take from the center to that end, it's going to be 60-40, okay? It's going to be 62%, 40%. Same applies from this part to that part. The camera doesn't show really well, but again, 60-40. Uh, and uh, every little detail, every little detail, uh, even inside of the acanthuses and so on, it's all followed uh, by, uh, you know, golden ratio and uh, Fibonacci sequence and so on. Now, I do have another question. Uh, David is asking, are those Baroque acanthus leaves? Not really, okay? Yes and no, 
okay? Uh, when you look at those acanthus leaves, uh, the, it's actually an excellent question. I really like that question. <laughs> and I really do appreciate that question because a lot of people, when they say an acanthus leaf, they have no idea what they're talking about. Uh, when you say Baroque acanthus leaf, uh, you're referring to specific time, okay, to the Baroque period. But uh, the problem uh, with timing and the style of Baroque, it all depends where you're at. Uh, Italy, let's say Venetian Baroque, <laughs> it's just like 190 years uh, before the Baroque style reached northern European countries. So it was already Baroque in, uh, uh, in uh, Italy, not Italy, but uh, I shouldn't say that uh, it's uh, in Venice uh, because it wasn't part of Italy. But uh, in England and Germany, uh, they did not get to it yet for another like almost 200 years. Uh, but this particular style, uh, it's like a transition. It's a French style and it's a Rococo style, okay? It's a little later. They still would use a Baroque style acanthus uh, and uh, there's a different, uh, I mean, there's a big difference in Baroque style acanthus versus uh, later. But this is, a, I would say, probably early Rococo style. It's still Baroque style acanthus, uh, but they already introduced some Rocali are a different style of shells, which is a 19th century. Uh, so you cannot say that is a Baroque. So that would be a Rococo. I'm not sure if I even uh, say that <laughs> properly. It just uh, sounds weird for me. But it is what it is. Okay, let me see. Uh, Fabio, I'd love to be there in person but uh, traveling visa. I know, yeah, because you're outside of uh, United States. You're in Brazil, I believe, right? So you're from Brazil. So maybe someday I'm gonna come to you and uh, visit you, who knows? Okay, another question. Maybe you could show us how certain tools are used in different situation, like backband. Perfect question. The backband is, uh, one of the best tools actually uh, when you're talking about the back bend it's the tool right there okay so it's a uh, bent it backward but uh, the back bend is useful for a lot of different stuff one of the ways let's say I've got the high spot right here but I still have to reach and uh, carve this area okay and if I want to attack that uh, with the right angle uh, with the straight tool it's gonna dig in, so it's not gonna give me a ability to uh, carve that nicely. But uh, with the back bend, uh, see, uh, it's uh, raised. Let me just uh, show you from the side. It's raised uh, above, and uh, I can safely attack this part. And uh, obviously, that is uh, one of the reasons why I love that tool. Uh, the second way, what I like to use uh, back bend for, uh, for the undercutting. Okay, so. Again, it's a, such a nice tool when you're just working your way right underneath. So it's a really, really good tool for the undercut. So like, let's say, that, that is a single piece, by the way. And to get really deep undercuts, so you really need some kind of tool. And again, in this case, I could use just a straight tool, but sometimes uh, there's a stuff right on the way and you really need to get underneath and there's no other tool can do that. So that is the back bend. Okay, so I hope it answers the question. Okay, let me see another question. Fabio is saying, maybe we can uh, make a group here and uh, master class. That would be awesome, why not? If you do know any uh, woodworking schools, uh, or any like a clubs, I'm not sure if there's a thing even in the Brazil, or or if you can just uh, find a uh, place we can rent uh, and uh, just uh, get together a bunch of people and just to uh, do like a five day class. I would love to come to you. Why not? I mean, I'm I'm traveling and teaching all the time. 
and uh, you can be an organizer. Uh, you can organize a bunch of people together. I would love to do that. Uh, of course, uh, you know, we have to talk about, uh, you know, all the setup and so on. But we can do, I mean, we can do uh, uh, carving just uh, with one knife or we can do really complex stuff. Like, you know, that was another class uh, I was teaching uh, also in person. Okay. So uh, in another school. So we can do uh, something like that. Why not? If you're interested to organize it, I'm I'm all open to it. So, uh, any point? Okay, let me see. One week of carving class, Fabio. Yeah, one week, five days. Uh, so we can do that. It's uh, like uh, Monday to Friday, and uh, I'm in Florida, and uh, to fly to Brazil, it doesn't take too long for me. I can come on Sunday and just leave on Friday night, and that would be nice. I would love to, you know, come and meet you in person and see what you're working on. I mean, some of the musical instruments. Why not? James, I need to get some of those. Uh, all right. Good to see you, by the way. Good to see you, okay? So, uh, say hello to your wife, and I wish I, you know, can hug you and uh, shake your hand and uh, hope everything is well. But I need to get some of those. Oh, you're talking about uh, back band. I see. All right. Fabio, let's do it. Uh, James, hello, my friend. Hello, brother. Hello, my friend. Okay. I hope uh, children are doing well. Uh, the weather is wonderful. It's, uh, well, it should be hot right now, right, in Utah. Uh, uh, it's already <laughs> June. What is it? June 1st. Okay. Very well. Great. Hope it answers. Uh, by the way, as far as the back bands, uh, I've got uh, <laughs> some of them huge, like, you know, really big ones like this. Okay. And uh, they are really handy to get right underneath in the big carvings. Uh, some of them uh, really tiny ones, uh, some of them really like about one eighth of an inch, three millimeters, and the different uh, curvature, and you can just get, like like I said, see this is on my way, and let's say if I need to get right underneath, it just helps me a lot, okay, just helps me a lot. I also do have uh, some really short and different uh, profiles, back bends. Uh, like those ones, you can see it's really, really tiny. It's still back bend, but let's say if I'm gonna need uh, to reach in this area and with a straight tool, just because it's a single piece, that is, uh, it's not glued on piece. I mean, the, everything just carved from a single piece and you really need to get somewhere right there and straight tool not gonna give you that ability, you know, and uh, this one is also excellent. It's just a gorgeous, okay. Uh, what I can show, what else I can show to you. Some of them really uh, different back bends. Uh, like I said, it's a, almost like a shallow back bend, okay. Uh, almost like a shallow back bend. But like I said, I've got uh, so many back bends. Uh, those back bends are my favorite tools. I've got. You know, some of them huge, like, you know, like this one right there. Okay, it's a huge one. So, <laughs> you can see, and that's a really good uh, back bend. Uh, um, I, I use them a lot. Uh, if you remember of my school, schoolofwoodcarving.com, uh, you can see some of uh, the use of them. Not much. Uh, in a big project I just finished, I mean, not just finished, it was last year, uh, but I, you know, shipped it away. It was a Venetian style carving, which took me like two years of filming, which is available, by the way, uh, for all of you online, schoolfoodcarving.com. Uh, I used some back bands, but mostly I used just number 11s because it was authentic to the Venetian style. David, good morning. Great to see you. Wonderful. David, another David. Okay. Rusty Lewis. Wow, I only have seven back bands and 
<laughs> none of them that big. Well, David, when I came to United States, that was the big problem. Uh, uh, the, the only back bands I could find here, uh, we're talking about like 30 years ago, uh, it was uh, number eight. It was from file, and that was only two versions of it. Okay, it was a quarter inch, and I don't remember another one was a little bigger. Only two back bands. What I did, I uh, you know, I ordered uh, all the back bands uh, from Europe, from Germany. Okay, uh, yeah, the shipping uh, was about uh, fifty bucks, but. I, I ordered a lot, okay? Uh, I, I pretty much ordered all of the back bands what, you know, I could find on the market in Germany. And uh, 50 bucks for the shipping wasn't that big of a deal when you just uh, get a bunch of those, okay? Okay, wonderful people. Uh, let me show that one more time. Let me just update you one more time. Uh, if uh, So that is... Uh, project from online class uh, not sure if you see that or not probably this is better uh, this is the latest online class uh, uh, for the beginners I should do it this way because <laughs> uh, diagonal is supposed to be a baroque diagonal if you know what I'm talking about so those are butterflies. Uh, that is a beginner class available already. Uh, the full course for this, uh, also uh, with all the certificates and stuff like this, if you wanna follow. And I also uh, show how I draw that and design right, you know, before the camera, the logic. Uh, one of the things I mentioned today uh, that I see conflict as a main idea of the design and uh, if you want to know a little more about the conflict i do have uh, actually the whole course about the design and conflict in design okay and i'm talking about uh in nature you can see oppositions always fighting each other two different oppositions not not necessarily fighting let's say male female uh, it's opposition but uh, it's a harmony okay but uh it's still absolutely different. Look at this piece, and you can find the opposition also. First of all, of course, uh, you know, 60, 40, okay? So the space, it's a golden ratio. Uh, the position uh, from the edge to this is a 60, 40, okay? So it's uh, everything is just based on a golden ratio. Now, if this one goes that direction, the movement in opposition direction goes opposite direction. Uh, does it make huge difference? Not necessarily. I don't think it makes huge, uh, like a difference how it uh, how it looks. And I doubt uh, back then in ninth century, tenth century, they worried about that stuff in uh, northern Europe. But it was just that makes me happier when I, you know, uh, introduce those elements of design, stuff like that. Okay, let me see. Like contrapasso, yes, absolutely correct, David. Absolutely right. So, but uh, like I said, uh, if you want to follow my logic, uh, just to check uh, my online school, it is a wood carving school of wood and uh, uh, it's not necessarily better school or worse school, it's just a different approach. I explain my approach to, to the design and I'm just carving pretty much the way I carve and uh, like I, you know, this live stream I broke twice, you know, the piece and uh, if I make some mistake, I leave it right there. So, uh, thank you very much wonderful people. Good to see you and if you would like to see more live streams, well, first of all, you know, I would like to ask you don't forget to, you know, consider at least consider subscribing and liking, okay? So it helps me to understand if you even need uh, me to turn on. So it's not uh, that I'm wasting my time 
uh, just to doing those live streams and if uh, people not interested. So let me know if you like those live streams and if I should uh, continue to do them or more often should I do them or not. Uh, that would be really helpful. Uh, like and subscribe. Also check uh, the school. Uh, that would be also helpful uh, uh, if you're not a member of my school. So, but uh, just check schoolofwoodcarving.com. Okay, thank you very much. Let me see. Fabio, another question. What do you think about wood reinforcements on the under, undercutting leaves or undercut leaves, an example? Like, um, let me just uh, show what you mean. So, let's say uh, when you just do undercut, like it's a really deep undercut right there. So we're talking about, let me see how deep it is. So we're talking about one inch, okay? So 25 millimeters uh, going right underneath. I, uh, I keep in mind uh, the direction of the grain and that's pretty strong, okay? But sometimes there's no way to reinforce it, okay? There's uh, absolutely no way to reinforce it. Let's say if I'm gonna show you this piece, okay? So if you're gonna see this piece, uh, it's also, you know, all of those leaves are from solid piece, undercut and everything. Uh, you know, I, I also, you know, use just the back bands just to go right underneath, all undercut, and uh, there's no reinforcement. Just be careful, okay? So just, um, let me just explain you a little better. Let's say uh, if from um, from the top it is flat, like that, the bottom goes like a V almost. It has a, some kind of rib right in the center. Not sure if it makes sense or not, but uh, the edges are thinner, even if it looks like a paper thin, but still it goes slightly, almost like a kill, on the boat, if you know what I'm talking about, uh, every fisher boat or any other boat has a keel like this, and that just reinforces that, okay? I'm not sure if I understood you uh, correctly. So, but uh, not always, uh, some of the stuff you can't really do anything. Uh, let's say, like, piece right there. So, I mean, you can't reinforce it. It's fragile, and if I'm gonna, you know, drop it, obviously, I'm gonna, break it. Okay, let me see. Okay, wonderful people. I think that's it. I'm gonna go now. At least one of you said you love uh, live streams. David, thank you very much. Let's see. Should I do it uh, more often or not? Let me know, please. Okay. Thank you very much. Think about the questions, write the comments. I would really appreciate uh, I check every comment, ask those questions, I'll try to answer them. But for now, have a wonderful rest of your day, whatever the time it is. Okay, James, thank you very much. Uh, have a wonderful day, just go and hug someone and uh, be nice to each other. Have a good one, all right?